Hey, it's Corey. Welcome to another Daily Dose of Truth. Super excited to be joining you. If you are around and jumping on, let me know you're there. If you are catching this on the replay, say hello. So this topic today is something I'm super passionate about. This is the reason I started my business and I want to get into specific tangible results of how important it is to be truly, fully, 100% connected to you, to you at your truest, highest frequency at your pure source. So you, the person that you are when you no longer have any issues around what other people think of you, you have no identity tied up in anything outside of you. So that's the place I want to speak from. And I'll give tangible examples from how this has changed my life dramatically. So for me, where this first came into being was around my body and health. So when I was 16, I was anorexic, that shifted into bulimia, which lasted for about the next eight years of my life. So throughout that period, of course, I had super disordered thinking around my body, around food, around exercise. I was completely obsessed with how much I ate. Hey, so happy to have you say hello talking about the importance of connecting to your true self and how being disconnected actually has serious consequences. So I'm sharing some specifics from my own life and I'll share specifics around my health, relationships and career and money. So, so around my body, of course, super disconnected from myself, didn't trust myself to know what was right for me, was following every diet under the sun, started with and in college, the Atkins diet, which is so funny, of course, got on the paleo wagon, all, I mean, whatever you can think of. There was this, this, this total disconnection with trusting that my body knew what it needed in order to be healthy. And so, of course, that resulted in me completely having body hatred, body shame, feeling really uncomfortable in my own skin, which resulted in health issues resulted in not being actually present in a lot of situations because I was always thinking about what I ate, how many calories I ate, when I was going to exercise next. It was ridiculous, right? So that also resulted in me investing money in uh, several different periods of antidepressants, of therapy. So thinking about the thousands of dollars, that disconnection resulted in me having to spend on my health, my mental health, and the thousands of dollars it wasted on me losing a lot of years of just being present in my life, right? So that's health, right? So what has shifted once I was able to really connect with myself and sit with myself and honor and trust myself 100%, everything changed. Everything changed. I mean, 180 degrees. I went from body shame and body hatred, being the woman who was obsessed with exercise, going to the gym, being late to things because I had to go work out first, being the woman in the gym who would hide herself when she was changing clothes, didn't want anyone to see my body, to a couple years ago, being a woman who was dancing burlesque on a stage in front of close to 100 people. I mean, talk about 100% transformation, right? The woman who now doesn't monitor what I eat, doesn't belong to the gym, knows what is the right exercise for me based on how I feel, and I let my body guide me to what is the best exercise, whether that's stretching or running or walking or hiking. I no longer have it planned out what my exercise is gonna be. And I let my body guide what is the right thing exercise for me each day. And the same with food. I no longer obsess about what I'm gonna eat and how much I ate and how many calories I ate. I no longer place value judgments on food. So before it was, this is bad food, this is good food. Now I see all food as energy and all of it is there to support me and being my healthiest version of me. And when I have that relationship with food, it changes the way food interacts with my body. So no matter what I eat, I'm in complete alignment with the energy of that food and it supports me. I'm in some of the best shape I've ever been in my life without exercising, without dieting, without obsessing about food. I'm completely comfortable in my own skin. I mean, it's amazing. Like it's 100% transformation. And the key here is connection, right? So I connected with myself and I trusted myself. I trusted that I had the answers, not some book, not some gem, not some exercise program, not some fad diet that my body knew the best way to move and the best way to eat for me 
And I just had to connect with that without my own agenda, right? So without thinking, well, I'm only gonna connect with myself if I get what I want, right? No, it was I'm gonna connect with myself and trust my body no matter what. So trusting my body is going to get into the perfect shape for it, not for what I think it needs to be or what society thinks it needs to be. It's what my body knows is the healthiest for me. And I love the way I look now. I'm not, you know, model, b bikini model, and that's okay with me. I love the way my body looks. And that is more important to be in that place of complete acceptance and celebration and honor and love than trying to conform and contort my body into something that it's not meant to be. So that's health, okay? So relationships, how relationships have changed for me once I was able to see that the key was connection. So before I struggled with relationships because I didn't trust myself, right? I was completely disconnected from myself. So I always found the most unavailable men and it got progressively worse. So maybe it started with unavailable men in regards to emotions, right? Then it progressed to unavailable men in regards to maybe being in a different city, maybe even being in a different country. And then it progressed even further to men that were already in relationships. <laughs> so <laughs> obviously this is not a recipe for a healthy relationship, right? Because again, I was disconnected from myself. And again, once I did the work to connect with myself, to trust, hey Matt, so nice to see you. I'm talking about the power of connection and how it honestly is the key to everything. So I was just sharing how before I was super disconnected around my body and how that had devastating impacts on my life. Now I'm sharing, <laughs> you jumped on just in time to share my, uh, how being disconnected around relationships has impacted my life. And then I'm gonna get into how being disconnected will actually impact your career and finances. So for me, around relationships, again, I always was choosing really destructive, dysfunctional relationships because I was super disconnected from myself. And once I got to the point where I could connect with myself without distraction, without seeking out some way to disconnect, which is really difficult in these days because we all have our distractions, right? Whether that's social media or food or alcohol or some activities, it's being able to sit with yourself no matter what comes up and trust you know exactly what to do. So with relationships, it shifted from dysfunctional really destructive relationships to now me being in one of the healthiest relationships of my life where I get to be me and, and all my, you know, ups and downs and goods and bads. And, and that to me is such a huge shift. But before I always felt like I had to be something else for the relationships, for the guy, right? And now I know I get to be me no matter what happens, even if that means the relationship doesn't work, that I'm still honoring me no matter what. Oh my goodness, so funny, Matt. <laughs> you said that you thought I was so self-assured. I was so insecure, it was ridiculous. But I was able to pull off this attitude of like, I don't care, right? That was my defense mechanism, was to pretend like I didn't care. <laughs> so I could kind of keep people away from me, if that makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna go into now how being disconnected can affect your finances and career. So finances and career was something I struggled with for much of my life as well. So not really, again, not connecting with myself, not trusting that I could pursue the path that was right for me, trusting I had to follow, not trusting, but believing I had to follow society and family and what they thought was best for me instead of trusting I knew what was best for me. And this is really challenging, especially when you're young. And I really feel for current high school students, college students, because I still think there's that pressure of, you have to take the job that pays the most and you have to maybe follow in your family's footsteps or there's pressure for your family to be something. So yeah, being able to get to a place where you trust yourself and you trust that the path that you have desired that has been placed on your heart and soul is the desire that you're supposed to follow, not the, fault, not the sort of racket that your family and that society gives you. Yeah, so the Coast Guard, so, <laughs> right. So I had this belief that I had to pursue engineering because at the time engineering was the well-paid career. And so instead of trusting 
what I really wanted to do, honestly, was I wanted to study writing. And I remember telling my stepdad I wanted to study writing and he sort of, you know, shot that down and thought that was ridiculous because that wasn't a career. So I pushed that away and decided, okay, I like math, I like science, so I'll study engineering because that's gonna pay me well. So it was always not doing what I was called to, it was doing what technically, quote unquote, supposedly was the safe career, right? The career that paid well. Which again, is just a form of you being disconnected and you not trusting yourself and trusting that someone else outside of you knows what's best for you more than you do, which I know it's difficult, of course, when you're young, but I don't think it actually is something that we're taught very well, because even you know, in, into my 30s, I was still in careers that weren't right for me. And now, of course, the last probably five, six years, I've been on the path of what I wanna do, but still there's challenges, right? So even in my current career, there's points where I've been disconnected and that has had actual tangible consequences in my business, right? So when I started, I was connected, this is what I wanna do. I wanna help people really connect with themselves, right? With their passion and with their purpose, what they're here for, how they can serve in a way that is doing work that's important to them and that they love and doing that work in a way that's natural to them. And it went well, I had a group and I had some clients, things were going awesome and I was super excited and it really was connected to what I felt I was called to do. And then I got disconnected because I started listening to everyone else outside of me, saying that I needed to have strategy and I needed to network and I needed to do all these things that weren't really true for me. I, but when I was doing it the way that was true for me, I had great success. When I started doing it in a way that was true for other people, <laughs> I didn't have great success. So it's also looking at the tangible results, right? So when you're connected to yourself, obviously you're able to receive income when you're not connected to yourself, you're blocking that income, which was true for me. I was totally connected, doing work that was aligned with me. I was receiving clients, receiving income, helping people. When I disconnected, I stopped that income from coming in. So. It's not just this place of like, oh, you need to connect with yourself so that you feel good. It's you need to connect with yourself because it has tangible consequences, like I mentioned, in your health, in your relationships, and in your career and finances. So I've been talking a lot. Do you have questions? Does that make sense, Matt? So wanting to help you all see that it's not just this pipe dream and like this nice thing and new agey, like, oh, wouldn't that be nice if we were all connected? It's actually crucial if you want to have <laughs> what I call significant success. So meaning that your success contributes to your life and contributes to your health, contributes to your relationships, and it's pervading all of your life. It's not a success that, that pulls you away and that distorts you and corrupts you and ends up destroying you, right? It's a success that is actually a true reflection of who you are. So, yes, any questions? But it's, I feel, if you wanna go back and listen to the beginning, you know, it's really astonishing the impact it can have on your life when you are connected. Like, just the transformation dramatically that happened in my life, specifically around my health, was probably the biggest transformation because that's where I had the most issues and that's, you know, what started in, in my teens and through my 20s. And just to see that you get to be you when you trust yourself and trust you have the answers and trust you know what to do and trust no matter what that you have your back and that you'll never abandon yourself and that no matter what happens, 